Hi guys, welcome to Bromley Christian Church. This is the message for March 29th, Sunday, March 29th. This is our e-service and the title of today's service is Take Back the Kingdom. So last week we talked about how Jesus came and he brought back kingdom authority. He took back the keys to the kingdom, actually two weeks ago. But we talked about how Jesus came to take back the keys. Satan had been in charge and Jesus came back and said, not anymore. This is my, this is my earth and I'm taking back authority. So the verse today is Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go, make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you to the very end of the age. All right, so my story, I'm going back to my normal method today. Um, I'm going to start with the story of my, one of my all-time favorite movies. If you've not watched it, you're missing out. You need to watch the movie Tombstone. And the movie Tombstone, the premise is, it's based on real facts. I don't know how much of it is real, but it's based on a real story. Um, and it's Wyatt Earp. He's, he's been a lawman. He was in Wichita and Dodge City, and he made a reputation for being this like really effective lawman, among other things. He had many jobs, um, but one of the things he was really known for was being a lawman. He decides he's going to retire, and he's moving to Tombstone. So he takes his kind of common-law wife with him, and they move to Tombstone. He meets his brothers there, and it's happy family. And they take, they like, you know, show this little picture of all six of them, like, yay, we're happy family. And um, as soon as he walks into town, the lawman's like, oh, my gosh, you're Wyatt Earp. And he's like, no, 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 I don't want a job. Don't even talk to me. I'm not going back into the lake. But you need to be. And he's like, no, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't need to be. And so he refuses. And so he's living in Tombstone, and there's um, there's this group of this gang, basically. It's one of the first groups of organized crime in, in America. They're called the Cowboys. And they kind of come into town and just do whatever they want. They they gamble. They shoot their guns. They they take what they want, and they're they're just a bunch of bullies who ride into town and have their way with wherever they want. And, and people won't stand up to them because there's so many of them, and they're afraid of them. So one night, one of the cowboys gets drunk, and he's shooting his gun off, you know, bang, bang, in the middle of the street. And the sheriff comes up. He's like, hey, man, I'm like, can you please put your gun away? You know, you're scaring people. And he's like, oh, you know, and he's like friends with the cop. He's not mad at the cop. He's like, oh, I'm doing what I want. He's drunk and like having a good time. And the cop's like, no, really, can I, can I please have your gun? Can you maybe please give it to me? Well, ultimately, the, sh- the sheriff gets shot. The cowboy's trying to make a joke of it and ends up killing the sheriff. And he, they go to court. But because no one saw him pull the trigger, he gets off. And there's he's not committed to the crime. So there were laws against what the cowboys were doing, but because there's no authority to stand up and say, hey, you can't do that, no forceful authority, they just get away with whatever they want. So after the sheriff is killed, um, Wyatt's older brother Virgil decides he's had enough. He's not going to let this, you know, injustice happen in his town. He's going to take back authority in his town. So he gets the younger brother Morgan and the two of them become cops and lawmen in town. And, um... They invite Wyatt, and he's like, no, I told you guys, I'm not going back into that business. I'm out. So one day, a group of cowboys get drunk. This is the OK Corral, if you guys know this story. And Wyatt, the Earps are going to go take their weapons away and try to get them to stop doing it. Wyatt's like, man, this is going to go badly. Let's not do this. It's not going to go well. And they're like, no, we have to do this. We're the law. We cannot let them get away with this. And Wyatt's like, all right, fine. If you're going to do this, then you might as well swear me in so that I can go and help you. So they swear him in, they give him a badge, they go to the OK Corral, it goes badly, people die, it starts this feud between the Earps and the Cowboys. Um, And and as part of that feud, Morgan, the younger Earp, is killed. And Wyatt's like, all right, that's it, I'm done. I'm not letting you guys do this anymore. So finally, Wyatt steps up and he's like, all right, I'm going to use the power of the law to bring these people in. and Wyatt is friends with Doc Holliday, played by Val Kilmer, who does an excellent job. Oh, my gosh. He's such a good actor. Um, so there's a final scene. They've been chasing down the cowboys and trying to get them to come to justice. If they don't, they kill them. Usually the cowboys see him coming and shoot them, so they shoot them. But the, the leader of the cowboys, Johnny Ringo, he and Wyatt have kind of made this date. We're gonna, they're going to show down. And uh, Doc Holliday is is sick. He has tuberculosis. And he knows his friend is going, but he doesn't think that his friend can beat Johnny Ringo. He thinks that his friend's going to get killed. So Doc Holliday meets Johnny Ringo. Doc Holliday says to Wyatt, man, I've always wanted to be a sheriff. And so Wyatt 
swears Doc in and gives him his sheriff's badge. So Doc shows up and Johnny Ringo's like, what are you doing here? And he pulls back his coat and he's got the little sheriff's star and he's like, I'm legal now. Like he's been deputized. So if Doc Holliday has just shown up and just shot Johnny Ringo as just a man, it would have been murder. But because Doc Holliday shows up, he's like, I'm here to take you in. Johnny Ringo's like, yeah, that's not going to happen. He's like, I'm legal. I have authority now. So either you come with me or I kill you. Ultimately, he kills him. And so you might be wondering, why are you telling a story of gangsters in the West in church? Well, it's because Doc Holliday and Wyatt Earp stand up. There is authority against the cowboys. There are laws that say they can't do these things. But no one had stood up to them yet and said, you can't do that anymore. So that is the same thing that's happening in the kingdom. So when Jesus came, he said, look, I'm taking back authority. There is kingdom authority here in earth. And now you, he said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. And now you go out. You go out and, and bring the kingdom to earth. And I know a lot of people think like, oh, when we die, we're going up into heaven. No, heaven's coming down here. You know, in the Lord's Prayer, it says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What that means is when we pray, when we act like kingdom people, we are bringing heaven down. We are bringing the kingdom to us. We are anchoring it to us. So Jesus took back authority, and now it's our job as as believers to look and see when the kingdom is not happening and be like, no, that's not allowed to happen. Not on my watch. I want the kingdom to come to earth. So when we act as kingdom people, when we act in our authority as kingdom people, we are bringing heaven authority down to earth. The problem is, just like with the cowboys, the devil and his minions, they don't want to give up control. They don't want to let the, they don't want heaven to invade earth. They they like it here, and they like being able to do whatever they want. And they have they were in control until Jesus came. And when he when Jesus destroyed the the power and authority of the, of the enemy, still all the minions are like, well, catch me if you can, you know. So they're like, you can't get that. So they are still acting out. And it's our job to say to them, uh, uh-uh, no, you can't do that. They're trying to, uh, they try to undermine, and then they'll try to undermine the kingdom. They'll try to undermine our belief in Jesus by they'll, they'll lie to us, right? They'll tell us that Jesus doesn't care about you. Jesus is distant. Jesus is weak. Jesus is not real. Jesus will come back someday. You just need to put up with it now because it'll be better later, but just sit and suffer now. That is not what Jesus says. You know, Jesus Prayer works. Like Jesus showed us how to pray faithfully. He showed us how to step up and say no. And I think about the story of Jesus when he's sleeping in the boat. You guys know this story. Jesus is taking a nap and there's a big storm that comes up. And the the apostles are like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, Jesus, wake up, wake up, we're going to die. And he wakes up, he calms the storm. He's like, guys, you had the authority to do this. Why'd you wake me up? He doesn't say, man, I'm glad you guys woke me up so I could calm the storm. That is not what he says. He says, why did you bother waking me up? You could have done this. Come on, have faith. I've been showing you how to do this stuff. Why do you still not believe? You've been living it. Why aren't you doing it? So Jesus, to me, that says it. Jesus says we are to declare things in the name of Jesus, and they should happen because we have kingdom authority as believers. I'm skipping that little story because I'm not feeling it right now. So Jesus says, hey, all authority, all of it in heaven and earth has been given to me and I'm giving it to you. So I want you to imagine that Jesus has handed you a little sheriff's badge like he did with Doc Holliday. Here's your badge. When you wear this, you have my authority. My authority comes with you. My authority is backed in what you say. So whatever you say is backed by what I say. It's backed by the authority that's been given. We are to take charge of the earth. We are to pray boldly for things to happen on earth. We are ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven. We are warriors in the kingdom of heaven. If if we leave, if we just sit back like that timid sheriff and just be like, oh, could you guys please like not do bad things? The enemy is going to run all over us. So our job is to stand up with authority and say, no, no way. You can't do that. Not here. This is my town. This is my kingdom. I'm a kingdom person. I, I, I'm a believer of Jesus and this is my town and you can't come. You're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to lie to my people. You're not allowed to cause sickness. You're not allowed to harm people. Okay, rant over. So what does this look like practically? 
First of all, we need to be reading the Bible and talking to God because we need to know what kingdom principles are. There are a lot of misconceptions and lies out there about what the kingdom is like. Probably the most prevalent lie that's out there is that you have to be good to get into heaven. That is a lie. That is false. It, in fact, the Bible says the opposite. The Bible over and over says you cannot get into heaven by just being good. You have to. You get into heaven by coming to Jesus and surrendering your life to him. Um, another one is, another huge lie is that if you're not good enough, God will reject you. And that is a lie. He loves you. Think about the prodigal son. That guy like said, Dad, give me all your money. I want to go out and have fun with my friends and party. And he came back. His father ran and hugged him. That is how God feels about us. When we get far away from God, he's not like, go get yourself cleaned up. He's like, no, come to me. Come. As long as you just show up, I will wrap you in a hug. I will give you a ring on your finger. I'll put a robe around you. I'm going to throw a party because you're back. It's not like clean up your act and come back to me. That is a lie. That, ooh, that lie makes me so mad. Another thing is um, talk about what God is doing in your life. Okay, so we are emboldened when we hear other people like when I hear other people say, God did this for me, I'm like, oh, I can pray for that. Or when I hear other people say, hey, God's moving here, I'm like, God is moving. God is good. God is real. Like that boosts my, all of the morale of everyone around you. So make sure you're talking about what God has done to you. Talk to your friends, your coworkers, your family. Don't be ashamed of God and Jesus now because you definitely don't want him to be ashamed of you come resurrection day. So when God comes through for you or you hear about miracles, tell people about that. Don't be afraid to talk about what God has done for you. And the next one is, and this is big, especially with all this corona stuff going on, is pray. I want you to pray. And pray doesn't look like, Jesus, would you please come and do this? No, that takes us back to the boat. Jesus didn't say, thanks for waking me up so I can calm the storm. Jesus said, why don't you calm the storm? So we are to pray boldly. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that the coronavirus will die. In the name of Jesus Christ, I place a shield of protection around the lungs of every person infected with the coronavirus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I demolish anxiety in my family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I demolish fear. In the name of Jesus Christ, I say that sickness can't happen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command epilepsy out of this person. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the cancer cells of my friends and family to die. We are to command forcefully. That is how Wyatt Earp took back the West. That is how he took back Tombstone. He didn't walk in and be like, hey, guys, could you maybe please give me your guns? He didn't say, hey, guys, I'm going to write up a, a referral for you. Like I think of like a teacher. I'm going to write up a referral so someone else can discipline. He's like, no, give me your gun. If you don't, I'm going to take it from you. We are to come boldly in prayer. And we are to declare things in prayer and not just ask Jesus to do it. We are to declare it in Jesus' name. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Number four, parents, show your kids your faith. Don't, quay, don't pray quietly in your room where they can't see it. Pray at meals. Pray in front of your kids. Let them see what that looks like. Um, read Bible stories. Tell them what God has done for you. Tell them stories of God's goodness. Okay? They won't know that stuff unless you show it to them. They won't know how to pray. When they, and you might be like, oh man, I'm in a rough spot. I'm sad or I'm mad or I'm frustrated or I'm hurting. I'm going to pray quietly so my kids don't see it. No, show your kids what that looks like because you know what? Someday they're going to be hurting. They're going to be mad. They're going to be sad. And if you don't show them how to do it, they're not going to know. They're not going to know even what that looks like. So we are to demonstrate that stuff to our kids. We are to live our Christ life out loud in front of our kids so they can see what that looks like. And the next one is calling out the lies of the enemy. I had a student once who said to me, Miss Wolf, why did Jesus say whites and blacks can't marry? And I'm like, Jesus did not say that. She's like, it's in the Bible. I said, no, I've read the Bible. It's not in there. There's no mention of whites or blacks in the Bible. <laughs> so there are lies out there that people believe. And when you hear people say a lie, or when you hear people say something like that could be kind of a curse, like, oh man, this virus is going to kill millions of people. But like, nope, it's not. No, Jesus is going to come and save people. Or like, oh man, I'm probably going to die from this. No, you're not. No, you're not going to die from that. Jesus is going to come and save you. So call out the lies of the enemy. Now I will give you a caution. Don't be that guy walking down the street. Don't go walking up to strangers and be like, God doesn't want you doing that. This is something that we do with people we are in relationship with. Because otherwise it's judgment. 
Okay, so like if my dad says it, I am in a relationship with my dad and I can call him out. Someone who's close to me on the church board, if they are believing a lie, I can come to them and like, hey, let's talk about this thing that you believe, this lie that you believe. I don't, I don't walk up to strangers on the street and be like, oh, God says you shouldn't. Like I saw a bumper sticker once, like Jesus hates your high school dance. You don't know that. You don't know what Jesus hates and loves. I mean, you might, but don't call out random strangers. <laughs> Do this with people that you are in relationship with, okay? All right, so in closing, Wyatt Earp stood up to people. He said, no, that's not going to happen on my watch. That's not going to happen in my town. You either get out, get it together, or I'm taking you down. And that's the way we are supposed to be as kingdom people. When we hear lies, when we see sickness, when we see hurting, when we see fear, we are to say, no, not on my watch. I'm a kingdom person. I'm not putting up with that stuff. This is our planet. Jesus is our king. He is in command, and the enemy has to bow down to him or get out. We need to recognize when the enemy is being a bully. We need to see sickness and hurting and hatred and lies, and we need to say it now. I am the sheriff. I've got my look. I got my little kingdom badge. I have authority of the kingdom, and you're not going to do that. So, as we go through this coronavirus situation, let's bring the kingdom to earth. We don't sit back and say, Jesus, would you please stop this virus? No, we are going to declare in the name of Jesus Christ that this virus ends. So I'm going to lead us through a prayer. Um, again, this is one way to pray. <clears throat> Feel free to do, pray your way, but pray boldly, friends. Pray forcefully. So here we go. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your mercy and grace. I thank you for your kingdom power. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming down here and taking back the keys to the kingdom. I thank you that you trust us to co-labor with you. I thank you that you offer your authority through our prayers. That you don't just sit back and tell us to wait until the end, to wait for Resurrection Day when it all gets better. You say, come on, let's work together to bring good now. You bring kingdom you bring the heaven, you bring the kingdom to earth now, wherever we are. May we be lanterns and lights, Lord Jesus, wherever we go. As I walk around town, Lord, I think that I'm a leaky lantern, a gas lamp, and I'm leaking your oil everywhere I go. And everywhere your oil is, your presence is, your healing is, your hope is, your faith is. May we go through this week as leaky lanterns, Lord, shining your light, but, but also sprinkling your hope and faith and joy wherever we go. May people look at us and see you. May they see your light. May they see your faith. May they see your hope when they look at us. May they feel your love when they talk to us. And Lord Jesus, you know very well that this virus has is ravaging our world. And I say no. I say not on my watch. Not in my town. Not in my community. Not in my family. Not in my state. Not in my country and not in my world. In the name of Jesus Christ, I demolish, I command a demolishing of the Corona-19 virus and any strain of the coronavirus in the name of Jesus Christ, you must wither and die. You are not allowed to live here anymore. You are not allowed to thrive. You are not allowed to spread. In the name of Jesus Christ, I halt the spread of the coronavirus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I place a force field, a hedge of protection around the lungs of every person who has already been infected with coronavirus. May they not need all these ventilators. May no one have to go to ICU. May our ICUs actually be empty because they prepared for them and, and suddenly this virus has disappeared and everyone's getting better and everyone's shaking their heads wondering what the heck happened. We thought this was going to be a total outbreak pandemic and, and it's gone. Lord Jesus, may you come and miraculously demolish and destroy this virus. And then we will all give praise and glory to you for your goodness, because we'll know you are the only way that happened. In the name of Jesus Christ, I also shut the mouth of fear. Fear, you are not allowed to speak to us. You're not allowed to make us afraid to go outside. You're not allowed to make us afraid of the economy, because Jesus has us. Because the Lord loves us, and he will come to his people when we cry out to him. And so, Lord Jesus, we cry out to you, come. Come into our situations. Come into our prayers. Holy Spirit, I ask you to place your hands on our ears and open our ears to hear and our minds to understand. Open our eyes to see. Open our hearts to feel you as you guide us through prayers. Lord, Holy Spirit, when we don't know what to pray, I, I bless I ask you to bless us. Come, Holy Spirit, and speak in our ears and whisper prayers in our ears. As we see need, Holy Spirit, show us how to pray boldly. 
Show us how to bring the kingdom. Show us how to bring breakthrough because you are God of breakthrough. You are God of hope and faith and joy. And Lord Jesus, I am excited to see what you're going to do. I feel it. I feel like you are moving. I feel like you are growing. I feel like there's an excitement in the spirit realm that is building. And I am, I'm pretty excited, Lord Jesus, to see what you're going to do. And I don't know what it is yet, but I know that you are good. And I know that you love us. And I know you are in control. And I know you are in authority. I know you are in power. And I thank you for that. I'm so glad that we serve a God who is loving. I'm so glad we serve a God who's willing to take our burdens. I'm so glad we serve a God who is a God of breakthrough and healing and hope and renewal. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. You know how in the movies um, people go to the king and they bow down to the king and they pledge their fealty to the king and they say, I will follow you no matter what you want. And then the king takes his sword and he taps them on the shoulder. And he accepts their pledge, and they become his. And then he knights them, and he gives them kingdom authority. He gives them the authority of his. So anywhere they go within his kingdom, they have authority to, to bring his laws to truth. And so I, I dub you, if you have surrendered yourself to Jesus, if you have offered your life to Christ, you have been dubbed a knight, a knight for the kingdom of heaven. Don't be a timid sheriff. Don't sit back and be, hey, could you, you know, please maybe stop that. No. Stand up and say, not in my town. Stand up and say, no, you can't have, you can't affect my friends. You can't affect my family. You can't steal from us. You can't harm us. You are not allowed in. You are not allowed to lie to me anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless all of you this week. As we go through this week, I bless all of you with wisdom. I bless all of you with new prayers. I bless all of you with a boldness to pray boldly in Christ, to know who you are, to feel who you are, and to step forth and make kingdom change. All right. And also, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, we always end with this prayer. If you have not offered your life to Christ, if you've been listening to this and be like, yeah, I want in. I want to come to the king. All you have to do, friends, is come to the Jesus. Just open up your hands and say, Jesus, I pledge myself to you. I give myself to you. You are mine and I want to be yours. I, every, I surrender my life to you. All decisions, all of my life I give to you. Just show me what to do. I love you. And he will wrap you in his arms and he will put a robe and a ring on you and you, are, you will be his. That's it. It's not hard. And then you just pray to him and talk to him. Lord Jesus, as we go through this week, one final prayer that I forgot. I ask you, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't ask you, Lord Jesus. I declare, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare supernatural strength and wisdom over all of our medical staff, our first responders. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare protection over all of our armed forces and our police. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare protection. I declare protection over all of our grocery and healthcare workers, anyone who still has to work and is out in the public. I declare a shield of protection around them from this virus. May they not bring the virus home to their families. May they not worry about this virus and how it's going to affect them. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, that's it for this week. See you next week.